don't all British people speak with a British English accent? No? What do you mean? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the big differences between accents in the North and the South of England. All right, mate, and welcome to the Brit Speak Pod, the podcast designed to help you understand British life, British culture, and of course, British English. So let's get cracking. Hey, up, mate, how are you doing today? I'm not too bad. Thanks for asking, and welcome to episode 021, episode 21 of the Brit Speak Pod, where we're talking all about British accents and the big differences between the accents in the south of the UK and the accents in the north. But before we get into all that good stuff, if you're new around here, nice to meet you. My name is Dan. Do me a favor, subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you're not new around here, welcome back. I hope you had a good week. It's nice to see you again. So today then, we're talking all about British accents and how they can differ between the north and the south of the country. But I know a lot about the northern accents. You know, I grew up in Yorkshire. I'm from the north of England. I know quite a lot about accents from that area, but I didn't really spend that much time in south. So it's time to call in a very special guest. And special is pretty accurate when it comes to this guest. So maybe you guys know him. He's an English teacher. You know, of course he is. But he's also a bit of a YouTube star. He's got over half a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. He's an author. He wrote my favourite English book, which is called A Really British Guide to English. Absolutely amazing. But more than all that, he's just a nice bloke. So without further ado, here's Tom from Eat, Sleep, Dream English. Tom, welcome. How are you doing, mate? Hey, how are you doing, Dan? It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're more than welcome. So for anybody who's listening that maybe has not met you before, can you tell people a bit about yourself? Um, Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm from London um, originally, and I have um, a YouTube channel, uh, Instagram account called Eat, Sleep, Dream English, where I teach fresh, modern British English. Uh, That's the plan. Um, I've been teaching for 15 years now around the world. I taught in Spain, Argentina, Hong Kong. And yeah, now online, um, yeah, just trying to teach kind of authentic English, trying to help people who come to the UK um, kind of understand their surroundings, uh, understand the world around them. That's that's kind of the premise of what I do. Yeah, that's good. I mean, like, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. We've both been in that situation where we've been in a new country and we have to deal with the real life language that's a bit different from the textbooks. But today I've actually brought you on because I want to talk about accents and the differences between the north and the south and all these different accents that you'll find in the UK and let's be fair there's loads of them but I'd like to ask you what are some big linguistic differences that English learners should kind of listen out for or they should try and pay attention to when it comes to understanding British people I guess for us you and I like the big north south divide so if someone is coming to uh, Britain and they're trying to understand accents I think that's where you begin with like the big north south divide of a few sounds that are differentiated between us and that's where you can start to begin to be okay that's a northern accent that's a southern accent and then obviously within the north and the south there are lots of different accents and then of course we've got scotland we've got wales we've got northern ireland we've got lots of other parts of the of the country but um yeah i mean starting with the north and south the kind of um the 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 r and the um, ah, right? Ah, so okay. um, the trap bath split, as we uh, linguists like to call it, that's the kind of biggest one, I would say. So laugh and laugh, um, sure. <laughs> you know, words like that. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the, the first one I, I think about. And then maybe um, the ah uh and the uh, mm. um, the pull and put. So, so yeah, pull and put. Um, uh, split. So yeah, those are the two big ones I would say um, sure. between us. Well, let's dive a little bit deeper into that because um, obviously we're both on different sides of this divide, so it's going to be quite interesting. Let's let's rewind a little bit to uh, bath trap, trap bath, whatever you want to call it, mm. and let's let's delve a little bit deeper. So what's actually going on here? Like which is which, and what does it actually mean? And let's dive a little deeper. Yeah, I mean, um, so yeah, in the south. Um, we have the two differentiated sounds, right? We have the ah and the ah. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, like I was saying with, uh, with laugh, um, that's how I would say it with that sort of the R sound, but yeah, up in the North, it's an ah sound. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why this exists. Um, do you have any idea as to why we have that difference? It's something to do with the way that the language was like modernized, but it didn't work in the entire country. I don't really know exactly why, but all I know is somewhere about Nottingham, between Nottingham and Derby, you can kind of draw a line across the country and above that it's Bath and below that it's Bath, which is quite interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a funny one, isn't it? Um, I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure as to why as to why we do it. Um, but yeah, um, like ask is another example, right? Like ask and ask, sure. um, dance and dance. Um, yeah, things like bath and bath, obviously that's the big ones. This is another thing as well, is that accents are so individual that, um, you know, someone might follow these rules or they might not. So for example, for me, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast. Just do it. Um, but like, okay, so for example, um, the word bastard, right? <laughs> bastard. Now, I, I, it's a great word. And when I say it with that sound, with that kind of, um, you know, a southern R, bastard, it sounds a bit ridiculous to me. I don't like the sound of it. I really love the way northerners can say bastard. Oh, you <laughs> bastard. So I, I say bastard because I just think it sounds better. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm from the north and from the south, but you can you can kind of choose the accent you want, right, and a, a, adopt the, the sounds that you want. So maybe that's that's one thing um, to think about. Um, and so do you do the same? No, uh, for me, like it's very specific. Like most of the time, I sound like um, Sean Bean, you know, bastard. He was, he was <laughs> yeah. very famous for this word, right, from Sheffield. So uh, yeah. most of the time, I do that. But if I'm kind of being a bit dramatic or you know if i'm in a funny mood i'm like oh you bastard you know right? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you do play around with it but the good thing about yeah. accents is like you said they're so individual you can just kind of customize it to whatever you like if you think bastard sounds a bit weird you can say bastard it's fine like yeah nobody's going to be like oh he's suddenly turned into a northerner no i just chose one word that's different it's fine don't worry i'm still still down here it's no problem <laughs> so uh, good stuff I, I definitely i there are some words that i really warm to in in, uh, in different accents so we're going back to that the um the put put spit to that ah uh, and uh you know talking about that um pronunciation feature again in the south of england we'd say both sounds ah uh, and uh but in the north it's just uh so words like love, like I do like the word love, like, all right, love, how you doing? All right, love, how you doing? In a sort of Cockney <laughs> accent. But the way Northern say love, all right, love, it's just so <laughs> nice. It's so warming and kind. I, so there are some words that are, like, I just like butter. I have, have a bit of butter, please. It's just, <laughs> I just really like the way the North says some, some sounds. So. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, I think... The funny thing, the funny thing here is that on this podcast, I often try and do impressions of different accents and I'm really shit at it, but you've come mm. on here and you've belted out some absolutely amazing accents so <laughs> far. So I'm sure people <laughs> listening can appreciate this more than anything else. So. <laughs> Going back to this, uh, what you said as the put, pull, I can't remember what you said, but I, for me, it's as foot strut split is what I, I mean. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a different linguistic feature for me strut and foot have the same uh sound and that's how it mm. works but for you i guess they're different right yeah yeah strut and foot yeah de definitely so that uh and ah uh sound um yeah and but this is a huge issue i think in general with english language teaching and students learning is for so many years they were students have been told you must learn received pronunciation and that's the only example they've had in course books teachers would almost change their accents to, you know, to sound that way. And it, and so it, it's become this issue where it's, you know, it, it, I think the statistic is that only, but I think it's between three and 4% of English speakers, British English speakers speak with received pronunciation, which is tiny. So this model that we're giving students is not representative of the, you know, the majority of English speakers. 
And yeah, like for you, that just isn't how you say the word. So how, why are you going to teach that? And in reality, students aren't going to hear it said that way, right? They're, they're going to hear your version or, or my version. I mean, it depends who they're speaking to. So the model that we give students, of course, should be uh, our own, right? It should be the, the sounds that we're making. And that idea that what's right and wrong, that doesn't make any sense. There's no right and wrong. It's what you say, what I say, they're neither the right nor wrong. They're right for you and they're right for me, right? Um, and I think as teachers, you know, we, we have to, you know, teach our accent. And I think students really have to be aware or understand that there is a variety. And especially if you're coming to the UK, you'll, you know, you'll be confronted with a variety of accents and you, it's useful to, to kind of at least have a base knowledge of what sounds you might hear. So understanding that there is, there is a difference between ah and uh in some places, but in you know, other places there aren't. Um, it's a big issue. Um, and I think actually you, you mentioned when you came on, on my YouTube channel, you talked about um, if someone is coming to the UK, um, let's say they're going to university in Manchester. Well, okay, that's it would probably be useful to start to um, identify some of the, the main pronunciation features of Manchester. Um, for example, um, they have a short eclipsed E at the end of words like city. So it'd be city, mm. city, um, money, you know, and it's, you know, it's not a huge thing, but it's, you know, if you're going to Manchester, why not start to understand the pronunciation features of that area? Because it's, you, you have a lot of contact with that accent. Um, so yeah, just preparing, I guess, for, for your, for which accents you're going to be, um, in, yeah, in close contact with. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Like, of course, like you said, RP is the thing that everybody assumes is British English and then when they, they rock up in Manchester and people don't sound like that, they can be a really, you know, overwhelming and it can feel like, well, actually, I don't know anything. I can't understand anybody around me. So confidence goes down. You don't want to communicate because you're like, oh, I can't understand people. I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's not a nice existence when you're in a new place surrounded by new people and you suddenly feel like you can't actually communicate with anyone around you life gets pretty hard and it gets pretty lonely pretty quickly mm. so i think one of the big benefits like you said is spending a bit of time just to learn the base level of these different accents that you might encounter on your trip or in your life or whatever it is but do you think that learners need to choose a british accent and try and emulate it do you think that's important um, I think that students should have the accent they want, but I think they should stay true to their own accent. And like, I'm not here to tell anyone what accent they should and shouldn't have. It's entirely up to them. I personally love it when I hear a bit of their L1, their, where they're from. I, I, it's because your accent is kind of a part of who you are. It tells you, tells us where you're from, um, uh, maybe your cultural influences. Um, it can be class. It can be all kinds of different things. And so there's a lot to love, I think, in an accent. Um, I think there's a lot of your own personal identity wrapped up in your accent. So trying to be authentic to who you are and then, but also, you know, considering, yeah, that perhaps if you move to Britain, you might want to pick up a few features that that sounds more British and that's perfectly fine, I think. I really agree with what you said earlier about, you know, your accent is part of who you are. And I think a lot of pressure is put on people to adopt a British English accent or an American English accent. A lot of, you know, you need to change your accent kind of mentality exists out there. But as long as communication happens and the meaning is understood and you're speaking clearly in a way that is not causing any barriers, I think rock on. Whatever your accent is, it's fine, right? So yeah. for me, I definitely agree with you on that one. So that's really, really good. But what? let's imagine for a second then that somebody decides, okay, I'm going to learn Tom's accent. I'm going to have an accent similar to Tom. I'm going to learn modern RP, whatever you want to identify it as. What are some steps that they can start taking if they're in that situation? What kind of step one, step two, step three to get going would you suggest? Yeah. Well, it's something that we, we talked about a lot, which was just 
the first step of any language acquisition is to, to listen and to absorb. So I would suggest finding an almost like a, a pronunciation model or, or an accent model, depending on how you want to look at it. Someone whose accent you really admire and you like and just start um, listening to as much um, of their voice as you can. So <clears throat> I've talked about this before with people where um, I had a student who wanted to learn, you know, modern received pronunciation. And um, we, I sort of gave her a few examples. Oh, here are some famous people that have that accent and choose one that you really like. And she chose Gemma Chan, uh, the act actor Gemma, Gemma Chan. And she just listened to her just interviews um, just as much as she could of her, of her voice. And just to, and just, I got just analyzing, okay, what's, you know, what's the rhythm of her speech? What, what's her intonation? Where does she stop? Where does she pause? Um, yeah. How does she say, um, you know, things like laugh? Okay. It's with an R sound. Okay. So just noticing, I think, first of all, picking someone whose accent you really like and noticing how they speak and going from there. And then obviously then you want to start practicing yourself. And um, I think um, something that's really useful is minimal pairs. We teach, I've always used minimal pairs as a way for students to identify the difference between two sounds. So again, if you're talking about the R and the A, then getting words that are like that and kind of moving between them. Um, you can do it obviously with lots of different sounds like, um, three and tree, right? The th and the t. you can, you know, kind of do minimal pair pairs where there are um, similar words with just one sound that's different and practicing. So yeah, a couple of ideas there. No, really helpful. I'm sure that's going to be really useful. Like I've always said accent and most speaking starts with listening, to be honest, like you've got to listen a lot and then eventually you've got to notice what's happening. And then it's starting to like do it yourself and copying or emulating and, you know, remixing it in your own way, if you like. So I, I think that's a really good way to get started. So yeah, that's been a really in-depth discussion, but before we kind of wrap up, the last thing I wanted to ask you is like, how can people like find you on there? Like, what are they searching for? How can they find you? Yeah. Just, um, eat, sleep, dream English. That's the, the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, uh, I, I sort of came up with that concept of eat, sleep, dream uh, English when a friend of mine said that he he fully understood, he was learning Spanish and he fully understood uh, that he got to a sort of proficient level when he started dreaming in Spanish. It was that idea of like, okay, you consume it and then once you start dreaming in that language, you feel like you've, you've, you've mastered it. So yeah, eat, sleep, dream English is where you can find me. Um, and we've done a video uh, on there, which people can find, uh, English and Friends, uh, with uh, Dan from Brit Speak. Um, that was a, a great chat that we had um, yeah, about really all things British. And, yeah, and you were talking about berate as being your favourite uh, <laughs> yeah. sort of British English term. Berate! <laughs> berate, yeah. Um, I've, I've mentioned it multiple times on here, so I'm sure people know what I'm on about <laughs> by now. Yeah. I've tried to use it at least once a day. You know how it's like, you know, ex the people do like 10 press-ups a day. I'm trying to use berate <laughs> once a day. <laughs> and, you know in a year's time basically from yorkshire it's that's yeah, it basically from yorkshire. i just want to sound like sean bean exactly that's that. it that's what we're all aspiring to there's a great uh yorkshire tea advert that sort of plays with sean bean's accent and he's like get you a know, proper like right come on lads let's go let's brew and you're like yes this is what i want this is the accent I want. on a complete tangent though I, i'm a big fan of sean bean but i'm not a fan of his name like if we look at the spelling, it's either Sean Bourne or Seen Bean. Pick one. You're not having <laughs> you're not having it both ways, mate. I'm not having that. But <laughs> I did want to say thanks again for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to to chat to you about this stuff. And I'm sure the people listening have absolutely loved it as well. So thank you so much for your time today, mate. No worries, mate. I really appreciate it. I, we could speak for another two hours about accents, honestly. But uh, I'm sure we'll get you back. <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, it'd be great. Thank you so much for having me wicked so there we go hopefully now you've got a better understanding of the difference between the northern and the southern accents in the uk thanks to tom from eat sleep dream english who's a lovely bloke i'm sure you'll agree make sure you go check him out he's on every platform but especially youtube he's got loads of videos including one that we made together go and check it out and tom also is an author 
of a book, like I mentioned right at the beginning. It's called A Really British Guide to English. And I, I absolutely love this book. It's like a Bible of British English. It's got, you know, loads of slang terms, like a slang dictionary. It's got loads of cultural tips about life in the UK. And it's even got some like practice section so you can practice British English. And if you learn in British English, you kind of really need this book. So it's available on his website. There's the digital book, which you can buy and download right now. Or I think there's a physical book as well that you can get the actual real life book if you're into that kind of thing. He's also got loads of courses and stuff. So make sure you check it out. The link is in the show notes. And if you use the code BRITSPEAK10, you'll get 10% off if you decide to buy his book. But yeah, other than that, I hope you had a wicked time listening to this podcast. I had a lot of fun making it. It's a little bit longer than usual, but... I'm sure you can accept that because it was so good and there was so much information. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. uh, Or you can go to britspeak.co forward slash britspeakpod. And you'll never miss an episode, but that's it for today. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you there.